what is the best way of forming a new habit that might be very challenging to be consistent with? Okay, great. This is, this is uh, some of my bread and butter. This is stuff I really love because it's overwhelming. You know, we've mentioned a bunch. Mm -hmm. People try and they're like, okay, great. I got now a list of 20 things to do. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's now like you already had a huge to-do list. You had too many things you're already not doing. And now you have to do another list of 20 projects. So never works. They always, everyone comes into my habit programs with this laundry list of things they need to change, fix about themselves. And that's not how I look at it, but there, there are opportunities to like deepen into this stuff. But the way that, that you actually, if you want to be effective at actually creating them is one at a time. Mm. I kind of like knock down one domino that's going to start to create that domino effect. So what's the one habit that would start to help make the, the rest of them easier? So for some people, you know, it, it, it really doesn't matter. Like they'll get too caught up in that and they'll be like, ah, I need to like start with meditation. If that is actually too hard for you in, at the moment, you just can't be with that, maybe it's going for a walk. And, yeah. and for some people, it might be like, what's their biggest pain point right now? Where they're breaking down the most in their life. My, I've got 10 credit cards. I'm, I'm in so much stress in this one place. Right. I got to create a new habit with the thing that's causing me the most pain. And that's, maybe, you know, maybe it's like my health. I'm, I'm really out of shape. It's, I have no energy because I'm tired all the time. Okay, that might be the place you get started with a small baby step. I would say 100% uh, agree if they're able to. Right. So if finances just completely shuts you down and you're like, I'm going to do finances first. And then you notice six months go by and you haven't done any finances and you haven't done any of the other stuff either. That's probably not the one to start with because sometimes it's just too, too much. You know, too we've been given all kinds of messages about finances as kids or some people have. And it's just like it just brings all this kind of baggage for others. Health habits bring a ton of baggage where that's not the place to start for them. So it's really like individual. And I would say, what's, what's the one that feels like it would actually make a big, diff, big impact with a small effort? So for some people, that financial one might be too big of an effort. Sure. So I would say, don't, you know, get to that soon, but maybe it's going out for a walk. You know, like that makes me just feel like I'm doing something in my day. I feel a little bit more energetic, taking out a little bit of stress. Maybe that'll help me to be able to do the, the rest of them. Right. You know, it doesn't have to be that. You know, it could be... I'm going to clean up my mess a little bit in the morning. And that makes me feel like, you know, kind of like that homework uh, example. If I can clean up my mess a little bit, mm -hmm. I'll be a little bit more focused. Sure. Maybe it's starting with like a, a short to-do list of three, three items, right? Like that's maybe my habit. Just like most important tasks, right? Just that'll be enough to have me be more focused during the day. So whichever one you choose, I, I really like simple habits that you can do in 10 minutes or less even two minutes to start with and do the simplest, the most, the MVP version of that, right? The simplest version. And if you want to just start with two minutes of walking, it sounds so silly. I, when I started running, I eventually ran an ultra marathon, but when I started, it was just like, put my shoes on, yeah. get out the door. Yeah. I could keep walking if I wanted to. I could, I could go for a little bit of a jog, but I didn't have to do anything other than get my shoes on and get out the door. Wow. So we want to focus on the start. All you got to do is get that start going. And if it's meditation, all I got to do is get to my meditation cushion, sit down. Right. Done. That's your it. success. You did it. And celebrate it your and success. And then do it the next day. Why, why next is day. celebrating a consistent positive act on your habits so important as opposed to not celebrating them? Well, we could get into the like neuroscience of habits. Uh, you know, I talked about how habits are, bad habits are actually rewarding because they actually do relieve the, the stress a little bit. Good habits have the, the opposite. The reason why we don't already have them is because they have the opposite structure where... They're painful. They're not as rewarding, right? Or at away. least uncomfortable, right? Yeah, like we own. talked about, like it actually is pushing into discomfort a little bit. And so we need a way to actually find reward. And so if we can encourage... Everything we can do to encourage ourselves. Habit apps work well for a little while. Um, that, so you like click on the thing. It gives you a little ding and a check mark. You know, um, Seinfeld method was put a gold star on his calendar. Anything we can do to encourage ourselves. That, those ones work until they stop being encouraging. So if you break a streak, it's like, ah, now I suck. Right now. So what we want to do is just encouragement, 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 reward, reward, reward. If you go, you know, some people like to do a hard workout and then have a smoothie and it feels really good. It's a reward, right? 
Others, it's like share in my WhatsApp group so that I can like tell people about it. Shh, you know, post a picture on Instagram afterward. Whatever you can do to reward yourself. If you have an accountability group, three to five people, post that you got that you did it. Give yourself a gold star. Do an emoji. Um, pat yourself on the back. Feel good. You know, give yourself a little bit of a break and just feel like there's a celebration there. Um, it doesn't have to be like stuff yourself with you know, um, candy bars afterward. Although, you know, give yourself sure, a little sure, bit sure. of chocolate, it's okay. Um, but whatever we can do to reward and, and encourage and make it a rewarding process. The whole, actually the whole thing should be rewarding. So from the beginning, as you get your shoes on, just feel the empowerment of that. Feel how like you are changing your life with this one little act. And then as you do it, if you're outside walking with your shoes on, you're like, look at this glorious nature, like feel rewarded by just being, by doing the habit. You know what I mean? If I'm meditating, could I really feel like how I'm gifting myself with some peace as opposed to like I'm forcing myself mm -hmm. to be with all my hard feelings? Yes, yes. So the more we can do that, the better. And it sounds to me like a, the reason why a lot of people want to create positive habits and empowering habits in their life is for a couple of reasons. One, they want to feel more... Uh, healthy, mm -hmm. you know, pleasure, let's call it, right? Healthy peace. They want to feel more confident about themselves. But two, it sounds to me like <clears throat> they want to do the things that will help them either discover or fulfill their purpose. Yeah, that's right. How do we start, and this is something you've been working on a lot, is how yeah. do we start to discover and lean into the purpose of this season of life? Because I feel right. like we have different seasons with different yeah. purposes. But this season of life, how do we start to figure out what that is through the habit forming process? Yeah. And should we start positive habits even if we have no clue what our purpose is? <laughs> uh, yes. So <laughs> starting ha positive habits, um, that really helps us to get that foundation. And I say if your life is totally out of order, everything, you know, everything we've mentioned is totally out of order, start there. Just get some good habits under your belt. You don't have to have all of it in order. We don't, don't set that bar but more like I'm starting to get my life in order, starting to take care of myself and my life. Once you've gotten a little bit of solid ground under your feet, then you can start to go towards purpose. It's okay to be doing purpose before you do habits, but I, I find that to be a little bit uh, more challenging. Uh -huh. So Interesting. Yeah. Because if you're going on your purpose, but your habits are out of whack and you're, you, know, you have a faulty foundation, it's going to be hard to fill it. Yeah, it's hard to even like ask yourself what's the purpose when your life is, you're feeling underwater. Because you're in survival mode, not thrive That's mode. Right. Yeah. Now, if you already have a purpose, you're like, I know what it is. I'm going to like work with these you know, underprivileged children or whatever it is, right? Like I'm going to really work with this community. If you know what that is, great, go after that. And as you're doing it, you can see how the working on the positive habits actually supports that purpose. These habits now take on a new purpose. And so I actually would support that. If you know the, hab the purpose, you're going to do all of this stuff so that you can better serve those kids. They're going to see a model of someone taking care of their lives. You're going to show up with your full open heart and like full energy. You're going to be able to focus on them rather than thinking like about all this other stuff that you've got going on. So I would say if you have purpose, go after it and then work on the habits to, with that purpose in mm -hmm. mind. But if you don't have that yet, if you're like, I don't know what my purpose in this season is, and my whole life is out of order, I would say get some, like, get some solid ground. Get up your neck above water. You don't have to be flying, but like a your neck should be, your head should be above water. A little bit of breathing space. Then once you've done that, the way that I would do it through habits is, again, first of all, asking what is it that I want? What's the life I want to create? But also, who do I care about? Who do I want to serve? What could I, what are my gifts that I could bring? Yeah. Now the problem with that is people can get stuck in that place of just asking the question, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And you'll, if you get stuck there, some people, they get it like, you know, an hour later or they start brainstorming and they put up this big wall and it's amazing and they're like, okay, got it. It's one of these two things and they've got something to move towards. Uh, but other people, they get stuck in, I don't know. And then they'll just stop because I don't know is like, the final answer yeah but it's actually just the start as my coach adam says like it's it's a, it's a starting point so we don't i don't know means like you can really dig into that i don't know it's you're now in new territory and so ask yourself like what could it be and maybe you have like some 
you know, vague answer. Like, I think it's working with, like, you know, former athletes or whatever it is. I think it's working with, you know, people who want to, sh you know, share their music online. Great. You don't know if that's, that's true yet. And so um, the habit after that is once you have, like, the vaguest inkling, start to take an action habit that will move you towards that. So um, I would say that people want to get some certainty before they, t they start to move towards purpose. Mm -hmm. That like self-doubt that you and yes. I talked about before this is like, I'm, I am like stopped by doubt and so I'm not going to actually focus on this one thing. Maybe I'll focus on 20 things, or maybe nothing. Just do what I already know how to do. And what I would say is you're never going to get that certainty until you start moving towards it. So get into the action habit. Don't let yourself get stuck in the I don't know. Take a shot at it. It's like somewhere in that direction. I don't know exactly what it is. And then start to build something that will actually um, move you towards that. And so if you want to like write a book for those, about those kids or for those kids, start writing something. You know, it might start it as a blog. Like me write, me write 200 words a day mm -hmm. towards that book and maybe share it with people. Maybe get some feedback. Maybe learn through the process of creating. Maybe learn what actually works and what doesn't. And maybe through this, this is actually how my blog worked, is through this process of learning, you start to like figure out what to focus on. And through this action, you're going to be getting feedback, you're going to be learning, it's a learning loop. And you're going to get clarity. And then the clarity only comes after you've done the, all of this. You might actually get clarity, it's like, oh, it's not this, but it's something adjacent to it. Or actually, it's not that altogether, but maybe it's this over here, and then you start to build towards that. So build something, get feedback, and mm -hmm. use a learning loop. That's beautiful. Only anger is right in the middle where you're like, I can feel anger. It's okay to feel it. I am okay to express it in my body, but I'm not okay with directing it at someone and just like having it be hurting them. I'm gonna go take care of my anger. I'm gonna learn something from that and bring that to the person.